In this video, we're gonna build this super cool looking gradient retro text effect all inside of Apple Motion. Now, this is just the first part of this particular project. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to make the gradient text effect. But if you want to learn even more and get an extended look at building this complex logo animation, you can check out my Apple Motion Masterclass where I've just released a bonus video to all Motion Masterclass members. There's a link down below as well as a special discount code as a thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and open Apple Motion Motion. If you didn't get the project browser, you can always go up to file, then select new from project browser. For this particular project, I'm going to select the Final Cut title. That way we can reuse it over inside of Final Cut Pro. In the top right corner, I'm going to set my frame rate as 2398. You can set it to whatever you'd like to work with inside of Final Cut Pro. And I'm going to leave my duration at 10 seconds. From there, we can push open. Here in Motion, we have no need for this type text here or title background layer, so let's go ahead and delete those. The first thing I want to add in is a nice background gradient. So going over to the left side, let's locate our generators. Then you can move down to gradient and just click and drag that into your group. To get easier control of this gradient, we're just going to go to our arrow tool click this down arrow and then select adjust item. And you'll see now that I have these on-screen controls so I can adjust this gradient however I want. Next, we can go over to the left side in our inspector and we'll locate our gradient settings, expand that out and we can adjust the coloring to our liking. Now, because we're creating this slime castle text, I want it to kind of match that coloring. So we're just gonna do a really dark green. Select my first color, go up into our greens and make it pretty subtle. And then we can select the second color and let's make that almost completely black. Maybe introduce just a little bit of color to it. And again, I'll push that over to the green side. That top might be a little bit too bright. So let's just bring that down even just a little bit more. Just keeping everything extremely subtle. Now it's time to introduce our title layer. So let's get our text tool. We'll click anywhere we like in the viewer. And I'm just going to write slime castle. And we can increase the size. We could go to our properties. We'll reset the position so it's directly in the center. And in our text settings, let's make sure our alignment is set to centered. Now you can use any font that you like. For this video, I happen to really like how the Apple Lysung font looks. But like I said, it does not matter what font you are using. Now I need to add some basic text animation to this and we just want it to kind of float up into place. So selecting that title, go over to your behaviors, go down to text animation and select sequence text. Now we can tell Motion how to animate this text specifically. Let's go over to the left side and you'll locate the parameter option. So we can add in a parameter of whatever we want to animate. In this example, we'll go to format, we'll go to position, and you'll see that now I have access to X and Y. Let's set this Y to a negative 100 value. It's going to keep the animation really subtle, but it looks super nice. After that, we're going to go back to the add button, go to format, and we'll select the opacity because we want this title to slowly fade in. Drag your opacity down to 0%. And now if we move our playhead, we can see that all of our title is slowly animating into place. But I want this to be a lot faster. So let's locate the sequence text inside of our timeline, move our playhead about one second in, and then push O to set an out point. And pushing play, we can see the animations quite a bit faster. But I don't like that it's individual letters one at a time. So let's adjust our spread. To do that, we'll go over to the left side and just drag our spread all the way up to about 20. I feel like 20 turned out pretty nice for this animation. Additionally, I don't want all of these to come into position one at a time. I want them to be in at random. So we'll change it, the direction from forwards down to random. After that, I want to adjust the animation speed because right now it's a very linear animation or a constant animation. Let's change it from constant over to decelerate. So it's going to start off with a lot of speed and then slow into position. I don't want it to be over the entire title that it receives that decelerate animation. I want it to be per letter. So let's change it from once per loop over to per object, each letter being its own object. So now they're all going to individually receive their own decelerate animation 
really smoothing out how everything looks in the end. Okay, so we have our basic title animation. It's time to start adding in some fun gradients. To do so, I'm gonna right click on our Slime Castle title and then select Group. In this group, we'll just call it the Masking Group. And while it's not super important for this particular tutorial, it's going to be incredibly important for the extended version of this tutorial in my Apple Motion Masterclass. Now that we have our masking group set up, we can start to add in these gradients. Going over to the left side, we'll go to library and we're going to find our clouds. I'm just gonna click and drag this into that same group. And in fact, we could even rename this group to be everything because we know that we're gonna have all layers contained in this singular group. Now that we have our clouds, I'm going to select them and we can go up to filters, go down to color, and we're gonna select this very interesting effect called gradient colorize. Now you might be wondering why I'm not selecting the clouds, going to the inspector and using the built-in gradient tool that the clouds already offer. The reason for that is because the gradient colorize tool has a lot more options when it comes to adding in our gradient. Now, before we add in any color, I wanna add in one other effect that's gonna smooth this out. So we'll just go on up to filters, go to blur, and we're going to select the Gaussian blur effect. Now, it's going to be important that we actually have the Gaussian blur underneath the gradient colorize so that the blur is first applied and then the gradient colorize is applied after the fact. We can select our gradient colorize and it's time to add in some coloring. So I'm gonna come over here to the presets of the gradient. And if you aren't seeing these settings, just make sure you expand out that gradient. And clicking on the presets, I'm going to select radioactive. Now it's very intense at the beginning here. Don't worry, it's going to be a lot more subtle once we're done. Going over to the left side though, you'll start to see why this gradient colorize effect is so cool. I can increase this repeats layer and you'll see that that's adding more and more to that gradient, giving us a really interesting effect. Now I wanna set this to a value of something like three, but this also works in tandem with that Gaussian blur we've added. So if I increase that blur quite a bit, you can see how it's kind of smoothing out the effect. So this just gives us more control over this slime effect. Next, I wanna rename this clouds layer to be the slime color, and we can go ahead and collapse it for right now. Now that we have our colored slime, we can start to use this masking group. I'm going to right click on that slime color and then select add image mask. From there, we can just click and drag our masking group directly into that image mask and you should see your title starting to cut everything out. So this is starting to look pretty cool, but there's a lot more we need to add to this to give it that nice retro flair. And a few of the effects we're going to apply are going to conflict with some of the other effects we've applied, such as the gradient colorize and Gaussian blur. So rather than applying effects directly to our slime coloring layer, we're instead going to select that slime color and create a clone layer. Think of it as essentially a baked in layer with all of the effects pre-applied, that way the new effects we apply don't conflict. Because we have two of the same layer going on, we don't even need to see the slime color layer. So let's go over to the left side and just disable that. And in fact, for clarity's sake, I'll rename this clone layer to be slime effects. So even though our slime color layer is invisible because it's been disabled, we can still see our slime castle title. With that slime effects, we can start to add in some really nice glows. Let's select the slime effects layer, go up to filters, go down to glow, and we're going to select the neon glow. The first slider is going to affect how bright the glow is. And you can see that that makes things really intense. So we're gonna to wanna to set that down to a value of about 0.5. After that, we'll see the outer glow. This is how much of a radius that glow has. Let's just go ahead and turn that all the way up to 1000, which is the highest that value can get. Next, we'll see inner brightness. You'll see that as I increase that, it's again getting too intense. Let's also set this to a value of 0.5. And in fact, we could even try something like 0.3 to keep it super subtle. And then from there, we'll find the inner glow slider. And I'm just gonna drag that up to give us a nice base layer. So we're getting this 
heavier glow here near the center and then a nice light glow far away from everything. After that, I'm just gonna drag down the mix to really make everything subtle. I also wanna back down the edge intensity to make it so our letters aren't glowing quite so much, maybe around a value of five. But I wanna add even more layers to this glow effect. So what we can do is select our neon effect and push Command D to duplicate everything. Let's back off the mix even a bit more and set our outer glow to a value of around 500 or so and our inner glow to a value of maybe 100. We could even back down the edge intensity quite a bit more. That's just the brightness of the lettering. That way we can see the nice colors coming through on our letters. One thing that's super cool about a lot of retro lettering is that kind of trail motion blur effect that you get from really bright objects. And fortunately, Apple Motion has a super powerful effect already built into it called Trails. Selecting that slime effects group, let's go up to Filters. We'll go down to Time, and then we'll select Trails. You can already see it starting to take place on our lettering, but now we just need to refine it a bit. Let's drag up the duration to somewhere around, I find 0.25 is pretty good, and increase our echoes until we have a nice clean line here. I found that somewhere around 15 to 20 is pretty good. Just know that this particular effect can be pretty heavy on your computer. From there, subtlety is the name of the game, so we're just gonna drag this mix slider way down until we can barely see those trails. So from this point, it's kind of up to you to feel out how you want these trails to look on your lettering, seeing if they're too bright or too dark, completely up to you. So I've kind of played around with these 0.31s looking pretty good with echoes at 18. However, just to save performance on our computer, we don't need these trails to last the entire duration of our project. So what I'm going to do is come to the end of our sequence text, which is about one second, and selecting those trails, I'm gonna push O to trim them down and that's just gonna save us in the long run. Let's collapse our slime effects layer and slime color layers for right now. And the first thing I want to do is add just a little bit of filmic judder to our letters. To do so, we'll go to slime effects, locate our position parameter, and clicking on this down arrow, we can add a parameter behavior. That behavior is going to be the wriggle parameter. Now, as it is, you can see everything is going absolutely nuts, so we need to back this way off. Let's go over to the left-hand side under our amount slider and just set this to a value of 0 0.5, or you could do even less than that. It's going to be extremely subtle. However, right now, we're only adding to the original values that were there. So originally we were at 0, 0, and now it can go all the way up to 0 0.5. But we also wanted to be able to subtract that amount just to add to the randomness. So let's change the apply mode from add over to add and subtract. And now if we push play, you won't see much happening, and that is because we need to increase the frequency that all of this animation is taking place. So what we can do is go over here to the left side and just drag our noisiness all the way up to 1, then we can see how that's looking on our text. That's looking pretty good to me. That gives it that nice filmic judder. I am a huge sucker for adding noise to our titles, so let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do is select the everything group that contains all of the layers we've previously created. From there, let's go over to our filters. Then we'll go down to stylize and select add noise. So this is going to be added to the top of everything. Right now it looks like a total mess, so come over here to the left side and change the type over to film grain, which is my personal favorite, the Gaussian noise, and Let's change this to monochrome and then change the blend mode from normal over to overlay. Now you can increase or decrease the amount to your liking to get this effect looking the way that you want it. But there's another super cool retro effect I love and that's larger chunks of grain, almost like we're going through some film weave. To do so, let's go over to the left side under library and we'll locate the cellular generator. I'm going to drag that into the everything group just above. Then we can go into our inspector. Let's change the size all the way down to as small as it gets and increase the speed as fast as it can possibly go. So taking a look in our viewer, you can see how it looks absolutely chaotic. But here is where the magic happens. If we expand out our gradient, you'll see that we have this top opacity slider. So I'm just gonna click to add a point and drag that all the way to the end. Then I'm gonna find this first point and drag that as close as I can 
maybe not as close, but very close, and then set the opacity on this first point down to zero. And you'll start to see how that's giving us this nice grain element over the top of everything. Another thing we can do to improve this effect is add some nice prisms and Gaussian blurs to kind of soften up the image. So go up to your filters, we'll go to blur, and we'll select add Gaussian blur. And I'm actually going to make sure that the Gaussian blur is underneath the add noise layer. That way we're not blurring the noise because motion works from the bottom up. And we're gonna set the Gaussian blur amount to about 10. Next, we'll go to filters, we'll go to blur, and we're going to add the prism effect. You can set this off to whatever direction you personally like. Then going to the left side, I'm gonna drag the mix slider super, super subtle. Okay, so now we need to dial back our text a bit. It is a bit intense. So let's find our slime color, go to our gradient colorize, and we can back down the saturation, or we can use this mix slider to get a little bit less. We can also go up here into our gradient and adjust these colors manually to make them a little bit darker if we want. Totally up to you how you want these colors to look. So I'm gonna kind of push these slightly over to the green side, which is gonna look really cool. And that's what's super cool about this particular effect because now we can adjust these gradients and get a completely different look on our image. So I could go over here to the left side and just use a completely different preset. Let's use Dawn Purple. And now our title looks completely different with all of this super nice glow over it, the super cool looking grain. It's just a really fun effect to play around with. I wasn't going to take the time to show this particular step because it's just more on top of more, but I think it really ties everything together in a nice retro way. What we can do is make it so these different titles start off with a slightly different color. To do that, we're gonna select our slime effects layer. We'll go to filters, we'll go to color, and again, we're going to add another gradient colorize effect. Everything has gone to black and white. That's totally fine. We'll fix that in just a moment. Going over here to the left side, what we can do is change the map channel mode. Previously, it was set to luminance. So the light and dark areas are being applied with these different effects. Let's change it from luminance over to alpha. So now, depending on how transparent the image is, is how much of a specific color it's going to get, which we'll map out in just a moment. Let's bring this gradient colorize down below everything so it's below our neon effect. Then in our gradient, let's scroll to the very bottom and select the sundown coloring. So now you can see that it starts off with this warm amber color and then slowly builds up to this bright yellow. But of course, we don't want this to take over our entire image. We wanna keep that original coloring that we had. So let's find this mix slider, and over the duration of the animation, we'll just click to add a keyframe on the mix, go forward about to the one second mark, and then drag that down to zero. So now everything starts off really warm, slowly goes to our green color, and looks awesome. And we might as well make this effect look kind of like slime because it says slime castle. So to do that, we'll select our slime effects layer. We'll go to filters, distortion, select underwater. Then we can adjust these underwater settings to our liking, maybe bring down the scale. We'll take the speed way down. And most importantly, we'll take this refraction down quite a bit. Subtlety is definitely going to make this look the best. Maybe we'll just increase the size just a little bit. And that is looking pretty good with these specific settings I've set up. Finally, to really make this particular effect look retro is to add in the strobe filter. To do so, we'll go to the everything layer, go up to filters, go to time, and then select strobe. This will allow us to essentially set the frame rate for everything in our video. So now everything is at 15 frames per second, and it's very subtle, but you'll see how that can improve a lot of the different animations that we've added in. This is just part one of this particular tutorial. And if you wanna learn how I created this logo animation from this title, make sure you sign up as an Apple Motion Masterclass member using the links down below. And I will take you step-by-step step by using simulations and creating this cool goo effect. It's really going to take your Apple Motion skills to the next level.